Hello and welcome to this quick little uh, video we're going over one of the new features in Worldographer. I'm the creator of the program, Jim Wetzel, and the feature that we're going to show you is turning on and off symbols, uh, city icons, for example, based on a date um, and a date range that you set uh, for that particular uh, feature of the map. And it's kind of cool, so you can have uh, one world map like what, what I'm creating here, and you can basically tag the cities with when they're founded and when they're destroyed or uh, when they're refounded even, and then uh, turn them on and off, uh, or have the system kind of show the one, show the cities that, that exist for a particular year. That's the, that's the goal that we're after. What you see in front of you here is a world map that I've created using um, real world uh, uh, coastline and river information, um, and then converted that into a format that Worldographer would read as well as converted into this icosahedral map projection, which does a, a pretty good job of kind of making sure that your distances at the poles don't get too far out of whack um, compared to your, your um, uh, the equator. Uh, it's not perfect, um, but it's, it's better. And people that have been through like the World Builders Guidebook or played Traveler or um, things like that are used to these icosahedral projections. Also, they kind of are they're kind of cool. They fold up into basically being a d20 if you took all these triangles and kind of fold them into a sphere. So that's what this is. Uh, I went and looked at some elevation and vegetation data uh, maps to pull up uh, or to, to kind of uh, come up with what terrain type should be in each hex. And then I had the system already auto generate the continent level. Now this will refresh in a moment. And here you can see that it's all kind of clustered uh, based on the parent hex right now, except for, uh, for example, here on the East Coast, I've kind of done some of that, uh, looking back at those, at those elevation and vegetation maps and kind of refined it so that you're uh, not so wed to the parent hex shape. But uh, we'll make those available uh, coming up in, the, uh, in a few weeks once um, this continent level kind of gets refined. Uh, another thing I should point out is this feature that I'm going to show is in version 1.145, which isn't quite out yet, but we'll be getting it out in the next week or so. Um, if I go to features now, let me expand this features drawer a little bit so you can, so it's not smooshing some of these. I can filter these. Uh, people who know Worldographer would be used to that. Um, and I can also filter based on the type. And so I want a city icon. And say I can put in here, um, well, we're going to, let's do the label first. So it's going to be Paris. And we're going to set the year to be um, years. This is the keyword for date matching, essentially. Years. And it was founded in 259. And it goes. Now we put a slash in between. And we'll say that it's going gonna, that it's gonna to go. Um, on forever and uh, I'm just going to place it here this is roughly right it might be off by a hex um, but there we have our Paris and then I can do um, as well London so we do London and for years for this I believe that this was founded in 50 AD and we'll also say that it's going to go on till the end of time basically place this here so now I've got our London and Paris um, in fact, actually, let me change that around. Um, let's make it a little bit more complicated because I like to live dangerously when I'm demoing things. And instead of doing just 9999, let's say that uh, we're doing an alternate history thing. Let's say that it was destroyed by the Nazis in 1940. And we put another colon. And in this colon, let's say that it was refounded. Either the Allies won or the Nazis decided to rebuild it in 1950 in our alternate history and now it goes to the end of time and uh, that's our our new uh, new date range for for London so we've got actually two different date ranges so now I just hit select because I wanted it to deselect the um, the current setting um, so now we go to this hide objects with tags so now we're gonna hide everything that that doesn't have a particular year in its date range so what I do is I say year and I put in an exclamation point. Anybody who knows much about programming knows exclamation point is kind of a not operator. And we already had London disappear. And why did it disappear? It disappeared because, pardon me for that, 
uh, it disappeared because it's assuming a zero if there's no number yet. Um, and 50 uh, AD uh, is after zero, whereas Paris still exists because it was 259. But I can put in here, um, we want the year, say, 1950. Well, 19, as I type this number, 19 is still outside of the range. 195, London appears because London was founded. We just put in there, it was founded in 50 AD. Now, if I say 1951, it's still there because it was refounded. 1949, however, it is, doesn't exist yet in our alternate timeline. So 1945, not there. You know, 2019, it's there um, in this alternate history. So that gives you a little bit of a, a, a new feature that's kind of cool. So as I create this world map, I'll be putting in the uh, date ranges for our different um, different cities and maybe some other things like, for example, Pompeii. For if we if we get to that level of detail, um, I would put Pompeii in as a city until it was destroyed. And then it would actually not exist as anything uh, for a while. And then there might be a different icon as ruins, where it would show up as ruins um, once the ruins were actually found and they started excavation. So uh, if you want to follow this, uh, you can follow the videos. We'll try to get back to posting these videos more frequently. Um, we also are on Twitter, and I've been putting out samples of this world map stuff on, on Twitter, as well as samples of our uh, Dungeon Morph uh, project that we that we kickstarted a month or so ago, um, and you can also follow us on our follow our newsletter by going to inkwellideas.com and looking for the newsletter sign up link, um, and probably a bunch of other things as well. But um, those are the major ones at the moment. Thanks a lot. I hope you're looking forward to it, and we'll have lots of cool stuff for you to do with your maps in the near future.